Do you want to know the salaries for pharmacist assistants in South Africa? Stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back to Farmers, the best pharmacy roundup channel in the world. Now, you already know the drill. Before we get into this video, I have to send out my disclaimer. Do not do the pharmacist assistant course if pharmacy is not in your blood. Like I said before, I'm going to say it again. Don't play with people's health. You need to be dedicated, passionate, and have resilience in this industry. It ain't for the faint-hearted at all, okay? You're not going to become some zombified robot, depressed and grumpy every day, you know, just being irritated because you take on a lot. Patients will swear at you. They will threaten you. They will report you. They will throw tantrums. And you have to, above all your professional skills, take on that other retail monster skills um so it's really not a piece of cake um people who do it because it's a quick way to get a job and have money no 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 don't do it do not do it okay thank you hey guys welcome back to farmers how you doing how you doing hey Guys, in this video, highly requested by the way, I want to share with you how you can become a pharmacist assistant here in South Africa and what kind of salaries you can expect. Stay tuned. Okay, so first of all, what is a pharmacist assistant? Well, I'm not going to get too technical according to the law, but basically it's those people you see in a retail or a community pharmacy setting that are, are the right and left hand men and women of pharmacists. They do a lot of incredible work in pharmacies to support and assist pharmacists. If you've ever been in a pharmacy, you know how busy it can get. And now pharmacists hold a lot of responsibility and they cannot do it all on their own. They need the cherished help of their fellow beloved pharmacist assistants. Now, you may not recognize the difference between a pharmacist and a pharmacist assistant because they both stand behind the counter, they both wear white dispensing jackets, but their level of skill is slightly different. A pharmacist assistant can start off as a basic and then becomes a learner basic assistant where they get trained to do various tasks around the pharmacy under the direct supervision of a pharmacist because it's an on-the-job training. It's not something you could just stay at home, study, and be done. You have to learn on the job every single day. Now, to become a pharmacist assistant basic learner, you get to do 12 months of intensive training and then you have assessments and then when you pass them you have a nqf level 3 certificate equivalent right then you go on with the same tutor or another and you get to do another 12 months of intensive coursework and every day on the job learning and you then become a learner post basic and you do all your assessments, you do all your tests, pass your exams, and look at you, you become a qualified post-basic pharmacist assistant. That is NQF level four. Still under the supervision of a pharmacist because they have the pharmacological, pharmaceutical, and legal background to really scrutinize everything, but you're well on your way to assist patients on their daily queries, with their medication, with their refills, and even around the pharmacy with all of the admin that's involved. Just so you can weigh the difference, a pharmacist's NQF is a level eight. So that of an assistant is almost halfway through. 
That means remuneration is also accordingly almost halfway through. However, it's really hard to determine the exact salaries or the averages because pharmacist assistance is such a huge pool. From the time you're a basic, which is at the very beginning, you can get around 3,500 up to 5,000 depending on the industry or the sector, the actual individual company, um, the location, the city that you're in, and even your gender, believe it or not. And then, um, so when you move on to post basic, you then get a little bit more money because now you can do a little bit more things and you can earn around 7.5 to 10,000 rands. And that's another 12 months of learning. But then once you fully qualify, you can then earn in the 17 to 20 something thousand rands on average. Again, it's so hard to tell because the pool that they've taken these salaries from must have included basics, post basics, qualified post basics. And that is a real big stretch. So you're looking anywhere from 5,000 to 25,000. That's a huge range. Again, as with my previous video on pharmacist salaries, I mentioned how experience and the number of years you spend in the industry also affects your pay. Well, a freshly qualified pharmacist assistant from year zero to year four can expect to get around 169,700 rands. This is around 14,000 a month. But after your fifth year, going upwards towards your ninth year, you can then expect to get almost 200,000 rands, which is close to 17,000 rands. So where can you do this training, you ask? Well, some of the accredited institutions include HSA, SMU, Mpilo Royale College, and a few others. But before you apply, make sure you have a matric certificate with a pass in mathematics above 60%, English and sciences, and then you can apply. You will need a facility. So you're gonna have to go to the pharmacy council and check all the available facilities that are registered to train. You will then need to find a tutor who is registered at one of those facilities and bear in mind, tutors can accommodate up to three students. And then once you have a tutor, once you have a facility, you can then register for training and start working. If you've qualified outside the country, but still wish to come and practice in South Africa as an assistant, you then need to follow the steps which I detailed in my previous video saying foreign registered or foreign qualified pharmacist and support personnel registration tips. Okay, I'll, and I'll link it down there. Now, I'm also gonna take this opportunity to send a massive shout out to all the amazing tutors out there who do a fantastic job at training their assistants. You guys rock. Now to all the others who don't do such a great job, who are kind of reluctant, please get your act together. You are ruining it for all of us. I mean, it is clear as day the difference between an assistant that has been properly trained and one that hasn't. You know, the processes, the protocols, the, the, the risk aversion, the way they investigate and double check and make sure is so crucial. There's nothing worse than an assistant who takes up all this extra responsibility, which they're not uh, professionally trained to, and then make a mess of patient interactions. They say some really inaccurate things. They like take charge when they're not supposed to. They allow very poor dispensing practices to go on. Like it, it can become a really big mess really fast. Like it unravels like that. 
So this is also a warning to all the assistants out there. Please make sure you understand your scope. If you do not, ask the pharmacist under whom you are um, being supervised to please train you properly, okay? And when in doubt, ask. There's a reason you have to be under direct supervision, okay? Medications are not sweets. I say this time and time again, but like there's interactions with everything. A patient is not just an empty dustbin that you throw a pill in and it just has its effect and that's it. It's a complex system. You have to make sure that you've asked the correct set of questions. I'm actually gonna do a video on this about what things to ask and make sure um, between the patient and whoever is helping them, whether it's an assistant or a pharmacist, because wow, contraindications are real, guys. If people are taking antibiotics and they're not, you're not even checking if they have any allergies, you're not checking if they love grapefruit, you're not checking if they're on any other concomitant therapies or treatments, if they're taking certain supplements, like, it's disastrous. Like, there's so much to check that when I see very um, superficial interactions, I cringe. And if you're the only pharmacist in a pharmacy, you need to delegate because you can't check everyone and be everywhere. But that's why you train them to be able to identify situations that they are not equipped to handle. Ask them to come and call you if this and this and this happens. If a patient presents with this kind of prescription or where there's three or more um, prescription medication, make sure that you've asked or if they're aware of any contraindications, any adverse reactions, side effects, whatever. And then always develop the habit of saying to the patient, is there anything you would like to discuss with the pharmacist? Because then it opens up the door for them to understand that there's further um, services and further pharmacological or pharmaceutical assistance that they can get if they need it, but that they then need to refer to the pharmacist. Um, yeah, let's start being efficient in these retail settings mostly where pharmacists are not doing assistant jobs and assistants are not doing pharmacists jobs like there is a there's a science to it you know a well-trained assistant is the most beautiful thing so i hope um this video was kind of sort of helpful actually i know it was helpful girl bye so thanks for watching. I know this video was very helpful because it has been requested by many. So you're welcome. And yeah, what are you waiting for? Click the subscribe button because you know what? You've already missed so many amazing videos. And for you to not miss any more coming ahead, you need to get that notification and you need to be subscribed. So click the bell, make sure it's active for all videos and all notifications, and then you will be on board for the Pharma Train. Boop, boop. The best train ever. Yeah, because you know why? Pharmacy month is coming up, pharmacy week is coming up, World Pharmacist Day is coming up, and we are getting ready. Uh-huh. So yeah, a lot more great things to come. You need to be subscribed. There's a giveaway actually that ends on, on the last day of August. So if you're not yet subscribed, you're not eligible. You know, get to it. And then if you've enjoyed the video, like it. And if you haven't enjoyed the video, dislike it. Like, I wanna know, okay, don't be shy dislike the video it doesn't show me who dislikes or not so i won't know it's you if you're a secret hater or if you really didn't enjoy it drop a comment and let me know the whole point of this is for us to work together you know you want to see great content i want to produce great content so if you're not giving me feedback then i don't know was it good was it not good 
What do you want to see next? What can I do better? Comment below and let me know. Okay, I feel like I'm rambling on forever. So, toodles. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. for watching. Bye.